Hello, everyone, and welcome to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. We all love to play, and in our adult world, we can step out of time and space when we're engaged in a game, in an activity that's about pure joy and connecting with others to fun. As an adult, it can be hard not to feel guilty about lost time, work not getting done, not having a purpose to an action, and many of us may have even forgotten how to play. We're now calling activities like play mindful moments, being present, being aware with our breath. This all requires mental fortitude for engaging and stopping. Play isn't about stopping. It's about moving and thinking. We're happy about what we're doing and we're excited about our results. In our schools, we're worried about the emotional and social well-being of our children, especially during a pandemic. We're focusing activities on talking about emotions, about regulating our nervous systems, and about making good choices. Where is the play in this activity? How do children explore the situations of life to learn about decision-making, to take on the persona of an emotion, and follow through with actions with it while in a safe place? How can imagination and creativity be inspired through organic situations and decisions? Enter puppetry. We all know Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy from the Muppets, Elmo, Big Bird, Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street. Those puppets were a part of our childhood television shows that guided our emotional and social well-being and in our preschool and early elementary years. Likely we can all describe the personality of these characters and how they solve different situations in the various episodes. It's not easy being green, identified how hard it is to be evaluated and judged by others, and how Kermit worked through the emotions of this challenge. Today I've invited a very special friend and longtime colleague and business partner to explore the power of puppets. Both of us have used puppets within our dance programs at our respective dance schools. The power of the puppets to engage in storytelling, to explore problem solving, to provide comfort and joy, to assist with character development and to explore emotions and expression have been integral to our dance program spanning over, and I hate to say this, four decades. <laughs> Irene Widdop is the owner of Footworks Dance Academy in Barhead, Alberta, and she has also just created a very special preschool program known as Little Footsteps Academy for Fine Arts Exploration. Her Angelina puppet has been front and center of all of her preschool classes. With a variety of other puppets involved in her programs, Irene is well aware of the power of puppets and play to support children's learning. This is episode 13, and it's called Puppet Power. Welcome to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. Hi, Irene. Thank you so much for joining today. Well, thank you for having me. I felt very honored, first of all, and um, I'm so excited to be collaborating with a friend and um, a colleague as well. And I just can't wait to explore um, and play with you this afternoon. So it's awesome. So thanks for inviting me. So each of us has a, a, a storm brewing on the outside of our houses and we brought the calm to the inside. And I always like to start off the sessions with a little bit about tea. And that's just, that's about being mindful in playtime, <laughs> being able to just bring us into a centered awareness and to be able to just calm. <laughs> and as our busy lives go, sometimes that's more important than other times. Um, I tried to make a cup of tea for myself today and ended up with hot chocolate. And that's because it's really cold outside. But I also wanted to bring in my happy face mug, which gets to wink at people. And so I have the smile on the other side but my little bit of playfulness comes out in my mug on the other side. How about you? What have you got today? Um, actually, I have um, a real passion for green tea <clears throat> occasionally. And so today I brought in with me a passion fruit green tea that I'm really excited about. But I have a mug that I use. I have two mugs, one that's um, from Poland that I absolutely love uh, just because I love the colors on it and it uh, fills me with creativity and but today I also have one that's called with enough tea, anything is possible is written on it. And um, I love that because I love drinking my tea. And so anything possible with it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so Irene, 
tell me a little bit more about the puppets you've brought to the dance programs and within the classrooms that you've taught in the school systems. Can you share a bit there? Um, sure. Well, um, first of all, I've been teaching for 34 years when I figured that out, that alarmed me. <laughs> and um, I've been taught teaching with puppets now for 29 years. And um, actually, I won my very first puppet, which is Angelina that you spoke of, at the Calgary Stampede at the birthday game. And uh, she's a big, ginormous, um, she's actually a rat, I think, but I call her a mouse. And uh, she has been the staple of all my programs. Um, she's been with me forever. And um, to the point, actually, where... Um, I, I, she <laughs> slowly started getting really dirty and I was afraid to wash her because I thought she might, um, you know, disintegrate or something might happen to her. And uh, lo and behold, a parent uh, through my preschool program noticed that I had this puppet and um, she too, many years ago, won the same puppet at the same game later I found out. And they brought me a gift at the end of one of my preschool sessions. And when I opened the bag, it was her Angelina puppet. It actually really touches my heart every because I just was so, um, so touched. And she told me that she's so excited that her puppet will now have a good home and will be used well. And um, so I have now an Angelina number two. <laughs> and, um, and it turned out actually that summer, um, my daughters found other Angelinas that were posted for sale. And so now I have four as backups. <laughs> so, they, so they've grown in number. But um, anyway, so I've, I've discovered um, that working with them brings me so much joy and it just makes my, my job so much better and so much more fun. And um, I've used them at birthday parties in my classroom um, and just in with my grandkids even um, now. And so that's so exciting to pass on this whole business of puppets to my grandkids. And, um, and through this whole process too, my, um, my puppets have grown in number. Now I collect them. So now when I go on trips and vacations and things, I'm always looking for a puppet. What can I find in this area that's local and, um, you know, to the area. So it's exciting. Yeah. And, um, so they've, they've just been so valuable in any kind of work set situation that I've been involved in, for sure. <laughs> and it, it's so amazing too, to think that, um, you know, when you describe that dance parent thinking they probably had that puppet sitting on a bed somewhere or in a closet and wondering what will they do with that puppet if they don't use the puppet. And then yeah. to think, how alive that becomes and and two you have your daughters teaching for you at the studio so for them to be able to carry on angelina that wasn't mm -hmm. just your puppet that really becomes the studio puppet is mm -hmm. uh quite an opportunity and it's interesting because um opposite is it's actually opposite really because they're afraid to um uh touch angelina because a lot of people actually think she's sacred at the studio and um, even my senior students don't let anyone else touch her because she's Miss Irene's puppet and only Miss Irene can be Angelina. And so what has actually happened is it allowed my other teachers, um, my daughters included, have seen Angelina in action uh, with me and the bond that we have. And so they now have their own puppet. And so they have started their own um, special characters in their classes, which has been wonderful because it is really a team effort in our in our school environment um, that everyone has a puppet that they work with. Um, granted, they're in my collection, but um, I encourage them to get their own, but they found a puppet that suits their uh, personality and they've taken it over and uh, but Angelina <laughs> so, um, I have this odd feeling that she she might go with me to the grave. <laughs> but um, anyways, yes, I hope not. I think she'll, you know, she'll sit on a mantle or be in, in awe for the kids to see all the time. But yes, Angelina is a treasure for sure. And um, yeah, she is 
a character. And sometimes I don't even know what she's going to say. That's the fun part about it. It just sort of comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of leads us to the next part is, do you remember what it was that brought you to actually even bring the puppet into the classroom? What was that first bit? I, um, I think just, I've always had a fascination with puppets, even as a kid. And I just thought, well, gee, I have these, I actually have um, a humongous other puppet that I won at the Calgary Stampede, lo and behold, a wrinkle dog. I don't know if anyone remembers those from way back when, but the wrinkle dogs were really popular. Mm -hmm. And I have a variety of different sizes. And I used to um, just sort of uh, play when my kids were born, play with the puppet with them. And then I thought, wow, this would be really cool to just somehow bring into the classroom and, and play around with it a little and see what happens. And it truly was just sort of an accident. And, but it was a great accident because it opened up a whole different world and really became a valuable tool in teaching and reaching out to my students, um, in allowing them to explore their feelings and uh, just bringing in this natural, raw, um, great feeling into the classroom, very inviting, a lot of community because that's what puppets do, right? And a lot of love. Um, and it was also non-judgmental, right? Because a puppet doesn't judge. And so I think uh, it became a, a safety zone and it just led me to feel like, oh, this is, this is nice and it's cozy and fun. And it was a way for kids to also hug when they could. Now with COVID, it's been a little different. Um, but I've got wrapped my head around that and moved around, you know, in different ways of how to introduce the puppets. But before, um, my, my students would hug, you know, and, and give them a hug instead of me a hug, right? It was, it was more the uh, centered around the puppet. So, um, yeah, but that's what really happened. It was just more or less, I, gee, I wonder what would happen. And it just sort of went from there, you know. And I just think it's my personality to play <laughs> that lent itself to that. So yeah, so nothing super exciting or fancy. It was just something I stumbled upon, yeah. I'm thinking back because I don't quite remember how I ended up with which puppets, but when I wrote Stacy on the keyboard, the book, and I had the puppet in mind. So I had the Stacy puppet from Folk Menace. But then what happened within the studio was she had to come out of the mouse hole into the dance studio because that's what she does in the book. So then I had to have mouse holes around the studio. And then yeah. I could lay a book outside the mouse hole or an activity uh, prop piece or something. So the kids would come running into the studio looking for in the hole what was going to be the activity for the day. And that created a whole new piece of excitement um, just around that whole center piece. And that wasn't something that I thought too much about, but then those, those mouse holes needed to, yes, I had it in the studio, but if we went other places, kids were looking to see if they could find another mouse hole, maybe there'd be another treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, um, I think that's what's so wonderful about it is because kids are so drawn to it and there's this immediate curiosity. So, um, and they, and they start, thinking about all these questions well where where does this you know like for example for Stacy where does Stacy live and this is where she lives and look what she's left for us and any kind of troubles or situations that are happening in their world suddenly are just laid by the side and they become immersed in this imaginary world of wonderment and um, it also brings the whole class together and that's what makes it so exciting because then they have that sense of community happening within their group. And, um, and I know we've talked about this and, you know, what's wonderful in a class with a puppet is those kids that are shy or hesitant to come in because they're um, nervous about what's going to happen in the classroom. Um, it's just so helpful to have that puppet there because that puppet can take on that um, that feeling as well, right? And, and help engage them and bring them out into the classroom. So um, yes, so those little, you know, that, that imaginary world that you've created for Stacy, um, it just allows for everyone to become so involved 
and they just have truly a magic about them that um, not even a teacher can fulfill. It's just because they're, it's something, it's like, you know, Santa Claus, you know, it's, it's a world of, I believe, I believe, you know, and for them, that is so powerful when they have that be believing feeling inside of them. And it's just so exciting and magical. And I think wonderment and magical are the key words in all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I know we've talked about some of the benefits that goes to the students for having the puppet there. What do you think might be your greatest lesson from the puppet for yourself? <laughs> I was thinking um, about that. And uh, I, that's a tough question. Um, and I actually couldn't even answer it for myself. And I still keep pondering about it. You know, they've, they've taught me so much that um, I don't even know where to start. Number one, they've taught me, I already have a sense of humor, but they've taught me how to have even a greater sense of humor. They've taught me how to love, how to be patient, how to be tolerant. Um, they just those, all those attributes and core uh, values that uh, humans should have. Um, that we con constantly work on in life. I think that's what they've brought, uh, what they've taught me. And they've taught me not to be afraid to be who I am. So um, I'm a very playful person and I love to act out things. And I, it might not be, you know, a great act. I'm certainly not going to win an Oscar, but um, I really enjoy playing with them. And um, because I get really comfortable with it, they've taught me that I can just be who I am, even in front of parents. So, you know, often we have classes with little ones and parents are involved. And, you know, I know from just workshops that I've taught, teachers are very um, intimidated or shy about um, having a puppet on their hand and, and moving around and talking and in front of an adult. Because, you know, in front of children, you feel like, it's not a big deal because they just, you know, believe everything and it's magical. And, but in front of an adult, we seem to be a little shyer or more intimidated and not so confident. And um, my puppets have taught me to be confident because not everybody does this. And, um, you know, it's, it's great because I think now my adults that come in with the little kids have more fun watching Angelina and hearing what she has to say than sometimes the kids. So I think they too come to class very excited about seeing Angelina and what her story is going to be today. So if anything, it's taught me that um, it's okay to be goofy and it's okay to play and it's okay to just be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I think, yeah. And I, I know too, when, I, when I'm teaching with adults and, um, and they'll say, oh, I always wanted to do that as a kid. I always wished I would have. And then I think when you have that opportunity that they've come to class with their little one, because and two, sometimes grandparents have come and then, and they go, I never got to do that when I was little. I never got to, and they, because they're with that little person, they have the permission to just let go and be in the moment to be the best they can be for the little person they came with. Yeah. And, uh, and I always answer and I get people asking me that too, or saying that to me where, um, you know, I, I always wanted to try a puppet out and do that. And I, I always tell them, but you can, and you have a great excuse now because you do have children. Um, you know, it might be a little odd if you had your own puppet at home and you're just by yourself and, <laughs> you know, but um, I mean, and I do that because I have to practice with my puppet, but but now, you know, if you have kids around you or if you're a grandma and you have kids around you, that gives you permission to play and, and do that. And how exciting is that? And it's okay. Um, so I always tell them, go get a puppet because they're super fun. Yeah, they're just, and it just teaches kids how to play. I, um, I honestly find that little kids nowadays, even watching some of the kids in our, in our preschool, uh, Little Foot, Footsteps Academy, you know, kids used to um, make inanimate objects 
real. They could do anything and it could talk. I find that that is disappearing. I find that um, kids um, have a plastic dinosaur or whatever, and they're just hopping around with it and just making sounds. They're just going or, you know, Rawr, and doing all these things. So they're not actually creating the storylines that go along with playing. And I have been very, very focused on, um, you know, getting down on the floor with kids and playing and actually getting those inanimate objects to talk. And now I see the kids doing that. And I see that in my own grandchildren, because I think it's very important as adults that we go out and teach the kids how to do that, because that is actually a lost art form. And puppets allow kids, um, you know, when we're playing with them with puppets, it allows them to gain that back again, that skill of just allowing an inanimate object to speak. Because ultimately a child knows, they know that it's not real, but in their world of wonderment, it is. And they can create it and make it alive. And um, yeah, so I think that that, that tool or skill, uh, whatever we wanna call it, we have to teach it to this next generation coming up because it's it's very different. I find, you know, throughout all these years of teaching, I'm sure you found the same, mm -hmm. kids have changed, right? And so I think it's our job um, to make sure that that skill right, or that talent or that, that play, that sense of that play is not lost, that um, kids know it's okay to be like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, what have been some of your experiences about support and love that you've noticed through your students? Um, so I have a couple actually. Um, I have where I was, um, you know, I have had moments where a child has, um, cause usually when we start our classroom, we wake up Angelina all together and it's a group activity and we all have to chant and we wake her up together and, and it's just a sense of um, working together as a team. And then once she's worked with the kids and we've gone through some exercises and she's played a game with them, um, I set her to the side and then we go and do things in the classroom and she watches us. And um, I have had uh, a long time ago, I had a student who went up to Angelina and just sat with her and was talking to her and just talking to her about what was happening in her life. And I just think that really touched my heart. I still to this day always want to um, cry because it's so powerful. When we talk about puppet power, there truly is a power with uh, puppets. And she felt comfortable just talking with this puppet. Um, and letting her emotions and feelings come out and the love that she had and um, confidence and secure, like she felt so safe and secure to talk to um, this puppet. I think that in itself is just fabulous. Um, I also have had moments where I've had a student come into the classroom and they're just having a really awful bad day. And you know, um, and then I offer them the opportunity to, because it's okay to have bad days, you know, we're, we're not perfect. And we can, you know, um, uh, we can say, yes, you're having a bad day. Would you like to sit and cuddle Angelina for a little bit? And when you're ready, would you like to come and join us? And then that sense of they just have some comfort and someone to hold on to and hug and then when they're ready, they join. It just, it's, it's magic, it just happens. And then my, my third one that I was thinking about happened actually during, um, and again, I'm gonna get all teary about it, it, during COVID. It was right when we were shut down in that March of 2020. And um, we came back together as a team in, I think in September, finally we were able to come together and we didn't have a recital, we didn't have any closure, we didn't have anything. And my grade 12 grads came uh, to take pictures because we I just needed some pictures to have closure with my grade 12 grads. And um, and they said, Miss Irene, could you please be Angelica one more time for us? 
and uh, we sat down on the floor and I was Angelina for a group of six 18 year olds. And it was awesome because that's what they remembered uh, for all those years that they had trained with me and um, just put it all together in full circle of how valuable that experience was because it wasn't me. It was like, where is Angelina? Can we still take a picture with her? And will you still be Angelina? Can you do Miss Angelina? Can you do Angelina with us one more time? And um, that really brought it around full circle for me of how important um, Angelina is to the studio and how valuable she's been in my personal life, in my students' lives. And really, she's just a fuzzy little hairball <laughs> rat, and I call a mouse. <laughs> You know, but um, that was truly um, an awesome moment for me when I had 18 year olds, you know, um, who go out and party and, and all that, like that's their life, but they wanted to see a puppet. Mm -hmm. So that means mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And you've got Angelina beside you. I do. I if do. you want to, I know for those people that are on the podcast, they're not going to be able to see Angelina. <laughs> But um, for those people that are watching on YouTube, they'll have a chance to see because she's just, yeah, I'm just going to let you just bring her out. Well, this is Angelina. Hello, Angelina. Hi, guys. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Hi, Miss Michelle. Oh, hello, Angelina. It's been a long time. I've missed you. I've missed you too. And I can see you. You're, you're far away, aren't you? I am. Yes, you have to go on an airplane in order to see me. Oh, what? Oh, Miss Ivy, can we go on an airplane? Well, we'll have to see. We have to see if you can get on an airplane. Because that would be so cool. I, I would love to come visit you because Miss Ivy told me you live in a place called um, Cape, Cape of Breton. You're right. Yeah. And we have lots of things that mice can do at our place. Oh, you do? What, what do you have? Yeah, we have right right now we have lots of snow, so we have some tobogganing and we also <laughs> have snowshoeing. You probably haven't put snowshoes on. You usually have ballet slippers or tap shoes. Yeah, that's right. I've never snowshoed. Miss Vivian, can we go snowshoeing? No, we can try. We'll have to find some snowshoes that fit you, Angelina. That sounds awesome. I'm so excited that I knew you guys. Oh, and maybe I'll get to go on a plane. Wow. <laughs> Angelina, you cut me up every single time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for our audience, I, I think you can probably see how easy it is for even the two of us as adults to transition into playtime and how real it can become and how fast. So, oh, it's lovely to see Angelina. It's been such a while. It's been so long. You, you look awesome. You haven't changed. Not at all. Hair color's yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember when you used to live in Cochrane. Yes. And you came to my studio and played with Stacy, didn't you? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Angelina loves to travel. She's a travel. She's a travel mouse, right, Angelina? Uh-huh. I love it. But I haven't gone on a plane yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't seen the ocean. I want to see the ocean. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Angelina has definitely um, brought a lot of attention and love and um, yeah. And you know, the big thing is trying to make her look alive and realistic and um, yeah, so that she's constantly involved in the conversations that we have, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and also learning to, uh, cause she's four, and, uh, you know, four-year-olds have a specific way of behaving and acting and doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it nice to always be four? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Wouldn't that be glorious? <laughs> hmm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so let's shift our conversation a little bit. And if we go to some of the skills that it takes to be a puppeteer. So I know... Some people be thinking, there's no way I could do that. There's no way I could 
find that voice and, and create that um, persona that's there. What are some key ideas that you've played with that just brought you around to being comfortable with using your puppet? Mm -hmm. um, well, firstly, I think it's really important that um, you choose a puppet that works for you and that you're drawn to, because if you don't like the way your puppet moves um, or um, how it feels, or you're not drawn to it, um, you're not going to be able to work with it. And you really have to develop a relationship. It's like, you know, um, an actor has a character um, that they take on and portray, and they really have to develop that character and work with it, and they become one. And in puppetry, the same thing, um, the same thing is involved. So, um, just with Angelina, she happens to have a very soft, malleable mouthpiece. And uh, so it's easy to uh, put your hand in there. And you want to be, you know, want to make sure that you can actually manipulate your fingers and move them around. So like for myself right now, I'm kind of rolling my fingers through um, like a wave. And then your thumb is separate. And um, so you want to be able to, you know, manipulate and work with your hand. And I actually find that you have to train that for a while. You actually have to train your hand because I don't know about you, Miss Michelle, but um, there are times where I got a cramp in my hand because Angelina was talking an awful lot that day. You know, she's super excited about something and, um, and your hand actually cramps up. So it, you do actually have to exercise and develop those um, those muscles in in your you know um, metatarsal met, metacarpals and working all those muscles so that you can actually manipulate your hand and um, and then also um, you want to develop a character um, and a name and I know that you know this is a super fun part and so when you do pick up your puppet. Um, the first thing I always do is make sure they have a name because I find that when they have the name, then everything sort of falls into place after that. So I always look at my puppets and um, and they, you know, get a name right away. And uh, and then that way they can um, have a story told with them. So, for example, I have slow mo and those I know that not <laughs> everyone can see, but I think Miss Michelle has a slow mo, too. I have slow mo right here. Yep. Yes. Um, now slow mo. Um, I know that both of us have a slow mo, and my slow mo. I don't know if you do this too, but it's easy enough for him because he's hiding in a shell that he can slowly creep out and only have one eye poking out, and mm -hmm. that takes practice, just working right. And then he slowly creeps out and looks, and he has another eye. And inside, you can manipulate his antennas. So they can actually cross and scratch each other and you know it's just playing with your puppet and seeing what can my fingers do in there to create facial expression um and you know this snail puppet also has a great um, mouthpiece mm -hmm. so that you can curl your fingers and he can frown or if he doesn't like something he can scrunch up his face um you know he can move his antennas and that's how we make our puppet uh come alive now, slow-mo, my slow-mo doesn't talk. He doesn't have a voice. So for those people that are nervous about um, finding their voice, you don't have to necessarily have a voice. Slow-mo whispers in Miss Irene's ear. So he's talking in my ear right now saying, wow, Miss Michelle is looking pretty groovy. And he's giving her a good wave. <laughs> um, and um, he always whispers to me, so we always play slow-mo says, and so then I translate for him, slow-mo says, touch your head, you know, and so he's always moving around. I think also um, it's really important to remember that as humans, we don't just sit there and we're still, there is no stillness in our bodies, and so, uh, well, there is, but we don't, you know, usually in a conversation, we're constantly moving, we're fidgeting, we might be scratching, or our eyes are moving around and looking around, our head is turning. And so our puppets have to do the same thing. So even when um, I'm teaching, my puppet continually looks around, is maybe reacting to what I'm saying. They might be laughing, um, he might be a little nervous. Um, and so that's what um, you, know, you have to work with as a puppeteer in developing those skills and working with your puppet and seeing what do they look like 
um, you know, and what kind of expressions can they portray to kids? And the kids um, particularly, and my adults love it when, when Slomo laughs, because he shakes his head. So he opens his mouth up and then he goes up and down like this, because now he really looks like he's having a good laugh, you know? Whereas if you just open your mouth and you make the sound, it really, because he doesn't make any sound for me, he just shakes his head up and down with his mouth open. And then the kids think he looks hilarious and they totally buy it and get involved. So it's really just a matter of, um, you know, practicing and uh, what you can, man how you can manipulate your fingers inside and constantly be working at making sure your puppet is moving all the time while you're talking. And uh, it just becomes second nature actually. And it's really also important that when you're asking your puppet a question that they look at you eye to eye and you're talking mm -hmm. to each other because it just makes it look so real. And that they come and they talk to you and then they talk to the people there and then they come and talk to you and you look at them because that's how we communicate as humans, right? We make mm -hmm. eye contact. So it's really important that our, our puppets make eye contact too. Right now, to the two slow mos are like, whoa. <laughs> two slow mos. <laughs> I, I enjoyed working with slow mo in the studio because he had no feet. And then I, he would, you know, he would be like, wow, you have feet and, and your feet can do really fancy things and I don't have feet. So you show me a dance step and I'm just going to watch because I can. And that was yeah. one way to get kids who were really shy about moving and maybe making some tap sounds because they were, they wanted to make sure slow-mo felt comfortable and the fact that they could do something he couldn't do meant they were going to be better. So that was also a lovely little gift that came from oh, slow-mo. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, see, and slow-mo, my slow-mo, he is in circus class and mm -hmm. uh, he does acrobatics because he can roll really well and pop out of his shell and um, he's very good at the trapeze and being in the hammock. Um, so because all my puppets that I have at the studio, um, that all the teachers use, they have their connection that they have is that they all know Angelina somehow. And we, we have a circus, uh, school now. And so all our puppets have come to join the circus. So they've left home and they've come to join circus school, uh, here in Barhead, Alberta at Footworks Dance Academy. <laughs> And that's how they know Angelina and they're all friends and they live at the studio and they wait for circus uh, classes. So, um, yeah, so then they have, a, again, a community, a connection of why they're there, what's the story, and they've all come from different parts of the world. Um, and so then they can share what their part of the world is all about. And sometimes kids have actually been in those parts of the world. And so it's kind of fun to have that connection, too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's just so much power with them. They're so mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> they are. They are. Yeah. And, and I, hadn't, I hadn't actually had slow-mo on my hand for quite a while, actually, because I haven't taught a class with preschool for several years using puppets. And uh, put them on my hand, and it was just like bringing them home. It was lovely. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. So it's really important. I just have to reiterate that if you're going to choose a puppet, pup, pick one that's going to be easy to, to manipulate. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. And then it feels so great. And that's where, too, the uh, folk manis puppets, because they make a point of making sure that the mouth mm -hmm. really can move. Um, yes. and it's much easier. Yeah. Um, OK, so we talked a little bit about shyness. That's a big deal when, when kids come to any class. Um, if you were going to think about, like in a school classroom setting, lots of times they start with the center, and they'll start with the activity at the center. What would you say the puppets bring to center time that isn't there when the puppets aren't there? Oh, um, well, definitely um, when the puppets aren't there, what's missing is that sense of imagination. Um, I mean, we could create that in any, um, uh, in any kind of center, but there's also a storyline, right? Is kids develop um, stories and that's great in the academic sense too, right? Because with our academy right now, we're also, I mean, we're fine arts based, but we are working towards literacy and, um, you know, understanding mathematics and, and that whole learning process. 
um, utilizing the fine arts. And so um, the puppets themselves bring to the classroom the opportunity for kids to create the script or to create their story so that when we say we're going to do art now and I want you to paint, what is it that you and your puppet talked about today? What was the story that you created with your puppet? Because our puppet station, um, they go, they have a little theater and uh, they can go and they create a story around maybe our theme. So our theme this week, for example, is um, dragons at the Magic Kingdom. And so uh, today we learned about a dragon and a knight and the princess that was involved in the story. And um, what I loved about the book that I used was uh, there was words, but there were also just pictures that allowed the, the students to create um, a storyline. It didn't tell the audience what the story was. It had the pictures so that students could create their own story. And then we took that story, those pictures that they had in their mind, they went to a center and they reenacted the story with their puppets. Um, what was the story? And, every, and it's so cool to see that everyone had different um, stories that came to the table. And I think that would be what would be missing is we don't um, have that script writing, that part of fine arts where they can explore their feelings or their thought processes of what might happen in a story and their creativity. Um, you know, it's easy to pull out to, uh, toy train tracks and have dinosaurs mixed in there and then the dinosaurs are stomping and, and um, smashing up the trains, you know, as, as kids usually do where they're creating a kingdom or a jungle. But puppets allow for words, you know, it just, they start to come out and learning to talk. Um, like there, we have a lot of three-year-olds that are have, um, going through speech therapy and it allows them to actually learn to not be afraid to talk. We might not understand what they're saying, but their puppet sure does. And their puppet is, is speaking for them and the words are coming out and, and giving them that confidence to speak, right? And um, yeah, so that's where that puppet center is so valuable. And also if they're having a bad day, maybe their puppet can explore that feeling that day that they're sad or something happened at home or that they're happy and they had a fabulous weekend and they can share in that story time and creating that setting um, where you don't really get to, to get to do that without puppets because there isn't a mouthpiece really on a Barbie or well, we don't have Barbies, but you know, on a dinosaur, there aren't actual mouthpieces, but this way they actually physically get to create the, the voice or the, what that puppet is saying, right? And create mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. I feel anyway. Yeah. For sure. And, and interesting too when you talked about um, when you're choosing your puppet and and building that character, that is part of the script because it would be for writing stories, it would be for creating a play, it would be if you're doing a dance piece, you would be yeah. trying to express yourself. What kinds of emotions do you want at different parts of the music? What way do you want the story to go? You want somebody to have some kind of altercation and then they have to resolve it and it helps them problem solve all the way through that, but it yeah. doesn't have to be them. And yeah. then there's no judgment on it because that's just what the puppets are doing. So exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And today, for example, in our own class, we, I also have a very uh, large um, puppet, handheld puppet, that's more like a dragon or an imaginary kind of jungle monster that I am using for a piece of choreography. I have two of them and I brought him into the classroom today and um, he looks like a centipede. If you can imagine a centipede, so there's like half hula hoops down his body. And so each child had an end of a hula hoop and then we had the head and they got to explore how does this dragon or this puppet, because he is a puppet, move? And so then they also got to um, move through a piece of music and they learned how to interpret fast movement with the puppet, how to go slowly. Um, then I said, oh, he's getting angry and he, you know, he's going to uh, charge and how that puppet has to change his movement again to show that with his body 
uh, language, right? Because they were underneath and they were just having a blast and also working together as a, a little community. And, and that's what I call them. They're my community. They're a team and working together. And that's such a valuable skill, especially through the pandemic. People have been, you know, distanced, right? We've all been six feet apart. Um, we haven't been able to touch. We don't do things. So now they're still, they're, they're, they were apart, but they weren't and working together. And they had th at this experience of um, all sharing in one puppet. Um, so that's another valuable skill. Like we can all have our own puppet, but what if the puppet is so big and now we all have to work together to create the story of this ginormous dragon puppet, you know, like how is he feeling today and what's his name and creating that story. So today was an awesome day in, <laughs> in play for me. <laughs> we had a great time and their eyes were just like, wow, they'd never seen anything like that. And um, yeah, it was so much fun to, to watch them explore and even in how they approached um, I'm giving him a gender, um, but uh, he, you know, he's a, he's a him, he. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they were just so having so much fun and just being very gentle because they didn't want to hurt him either, right? And exploring his body and petting him, knowing that it was inanimate, but it became so real and he hadn't even turned alive yet, right? Because he had eyes and a horn and and um, just the exploration and the, and the tactile, just feeling him, right? Because not all kids like those sensory um, issues, right? Like some kids mm -hmm. don't like that feel. And uh, yeah, it was great exploration and um, so good for the kids. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. thinking about uh, my Loch Ness monster. Um, and Nessie's, uh, how long was she? Oh my goodness, 22 feet, I think. So she like she took up the whole studio. <laughs> Messi came out, but you're right in the camaraderie of the team to make yeah. that Loch Ness monster work. And for somebody who you know they were like, yeah, give me give me the head of the monster and let me hold that, and and to be the leader. And then some people who had to take the back seat and not be the leader, and the yeah. role that meant. But sometimes that not being the leader was a lot harder to do because if you were on the tail, you had no idea where the front was going and you had to try yeah. to do that not by being able to see because you're underneath the fabric and all you have to go by is everybody's feet and the movement that you experience. And you have to yeah. trust the team that you're with <laughs> that you're gonna get where you need to go in a safe yeah. way, yeah. Yeah, and it could be, I mean, when we're three and four and five, um, you know, we could have a, um, a negative experience with our classmate and five minutes later we're friends again because that's how little people work. But um, what a great value even because I do have my um, senior students manipulating this um, mm -hmm. puppet in a, in a piece. So now imagine, you know, you're having a disagreement with someone on your team. Uh, you might not really like them very much. But now you have to come together and work together regardless of our feelings. And we have to learn about tolerance and patience and kindness because we have to somehow get through the choreography or get through using this, um, this puppet together to make it look awesome. And what a valuable experience there for any age. I think if adults had to do it, you know, too, um, I think at first they'd be a little shy, but then they would just be laughing and enjoying. And then that laughter brings everyone together because we have a common, a common goal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, again, the power is amazing in this inanimate object. So great. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about um, just that storytelling piece is that sometimes we have a reaction, which is an emotional reaction to something but it's after the fact, it's because something happened. But when you're playing with a puppet and you want to relay a story or an experience, you already know what the end result is, what you're looking for. So yeah. what you need to do is bring about the, maybe the anger, maybe uh, frustration, 
but bring it around because you already know that you have to be best friends at the end of the story. So you have to figure out how you're going to get from that angry position into that, well, maybe I'll talk to you, maybe we'll resolve it. And then when we do, we're best buddies. And yeah. that whole transition, you already know the end part. And so you're actually thinking ahead to where that next space is. And mm -hmm. it leads you leads you through that process of discovery. Yeah. And, and even, I, even therapy. You know, we, we don't even realize that how therapeutic um, the process is um, until you really think about it. You know, if you really think about how therapeutic a puppet can be. And, and we, and they have been used for that, right? Uh, for that purpose, for therapy mm -hmm. at, um, in many instances. And, um, but how therapeutic is for a classroom. If you have some dissension in the classroom, if you have, you know, situations where people are not getting along, um, my gosh, bring in this big giant, you know, puppet that we've got. Suddenly everyone's a friend, right? And everyone's gonna work together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's such a, such a lovely way to play. And it's, it's beyond the dolls, because we can do that with yeah. our dolls and our stuffed animals and, and all of those favorite blankies and things that are on our beds. There's, yeah. there's this different personality, this different opportunity. Um, and I just, before we close today, I was just thinking about both you and I, when we go to teach and we were always like this, it was that imaginative process that made the day fly by so quickly. So mm -hmm. no matter what was going to happen in the class, and maybe it went as well as you hoped, maybe it didn't. Things pop up, snowstorms, ice storms, COVID. <laughs> but when you yeah. go in to do the teaching, that creative process that you have, that playtime that you do as the teacher, means mm -hmm. that you're in this lovely space while you're trying to relay whatever lesson it is that you're trying to share that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's such a beautiful process. It, it made every day in the studio for me, it was every day was just such a, a lovely experience to be a part of. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, most definitely. Lots of fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know you and I could go for a long time because we have, we have lots of things we love to share about these pieces. So um, is there anything that we didn't cover, you just would like to give as a kind of final comment? Um, I, I just want, I think, you know, when I, cause I really do believe they have so much power. They have the power um, to entertain. They have the power to teach and educate. Um, they also allow us the power to express ourselves and um, they have, we have the power to talk and um, we can hear our inner voice. They have the power to allow us to create. Um, there's just so much power in a puppet. And that's why I called it puppet power. And I do want to leave, I know that you were um, talking about uh, Sesame Street orig originally too, and also Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog. Um, but I do want to share, like, if you have a chance, go, and we all remember Mr. Dress Up. I'm sure everyone remembers this. Mm -hmm. And he truly was... Uh, yeah, Casey and Finnegan, he was truly the, the, the kickoff, the start of that world of puppetry. And Casey and Finnegan were a staple in my life. And mm -hmm. they're very simplistic puppets. If we go back in time and actually watch a YouTube clip, so I challenge everyone to go watch Mr. Dress Up, one more episode, and you hear that music and you see the puppets. And they're very simple but um, so important, so many things. And that led into Mr. Rogers, right? And Mr. Yeah. Rogers was all about puppets. It was so important for him. And, and it was, uh, Mr. Rogers was tailored to, um, towards developing um, emotions, right? And that logical intelligence. And so we based TV series on, on, the, on these puppets and we still do. So they have been around forever and their power and magic and wonderment and the world of imagination has been around forever. And we just, if you can go and check it out, go remember, <laughs> you know, it just, as I, I did that, I've done that. I love Ernie Coon. What, um, what a magical person. And uh, he was oh, just my favorite 
human being. And I wish I could have his job. He had the best job ever. <laughs> and he's Canadian, you know, to mm -hmm. celebrate a Canadian um, show that did so well. Yeah. So if everyone could just go out and just yeah. watch Mr. Dress Up one more time, it will bring you back to so many wonderful memories. I always think so. That and the tickle trunk. What was in the right? tickle trunk? The tickle trunk. Yes. Yeah. Such, I just loved that, you know, and um, he was so animated and he was your perfect person to talking to puppets. It was just so real, you know, yeah. so take notes from watching him. Yeah. And yeah. Mr. Rod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Compassion. Right there. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, I, I just want to conclude a little bit with knowing that um, Angelina and you have had hundreds of students that have been influenced by a positive role model. <laughs> Here's what my voice will go. Um, for learning and development in the classroom. It's just, it's so exciting to think all of the stories we have from all these years. Yeah. Um, so I wish you many more, and I know your grandchildren mm -hmm. have quite the legacy to bring forward. So it'll be fun to see what puppet they choose is going to be their voice and what they're going to play with. Um, and also for the teachers that you continue to inspire to bring onto the team with the puppets that they have. So I yeah. try to always finish an episode with something about dance. And we've talked about dance today and how we brought this in the dance studio. But when I went to YouTube and was looking up some things and playing with some music, I did come across Kermit the Frog with Miss Piggy in a little episode um, which was called I Won't Dance and Kermit the Frog refused to dance because his feet wouldn't move and I thought it was just the epitome of of what happens when the puppets come out in the trying to overcome our fears and what can happen and then of course Miss Piggy's outstanding personality of how to be as big as the room <laughs> which yeah. is so lovely so yeah. that's that's why I in, invite people so we have we have um Ernie Coombs, and we have Mr. Rogers, and we have Kermit and Miss Piggy, and uh, just inspiring people, hopefully, to go check out the puppets and see what can happen. Um, I also have um, um, a playlist and uh, the podcasts on the YouTube channel, so you can find be able to find this recording if you're listening to it, and you do want to see uh, Miss Irene play with Angelina, um, then you can find it on the YouTube channel, Michelle Greenwell. Um, and then uh, from there, I will just conclude with uh, thanking you, Irene, for, for this lovely conversation today. And I know we're working on a little bit more with puppets and there's more to come, uh, but thank you so much for this lovely trip today. Well, and thank you for having me. Um, I truly feel honored and uh, it's been a treat. So thank you so much. And yes, you're right. We could talk about it forever. So do have me on again. It'd be awesome. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. Uh, and congratulations on all the great work that you've been doing. So it just is tremendous. So you two are leaving a tremendous legacy. We all, yeah, all just are, I'm in awe of you all the time. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. So you've been listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. Be sure to check out the other podcasts on Buzzsprout, Spotify, and Google, as well as you can go to the YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about Irene and her programs and the workshops that she, she does provide to professionals as well, you can find her at footworksdanceacademy.ca. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye, guys.